G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, the S800 Reptile Shadow. As you can see, I have mine all together. It's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. This is supposed to be an, uh, an RTF, says on the box, or an RTF, PNF, plug and fly. It's a long way from a plug and fly model. There's actually, I've spent all day fuffing around getting the final bits and pieces on this done. It's taken me well over a day to build it. And, um, you know, that's a long time for something. When you consider you can get something like the FMS Super Easy, it can be flying in 15 minutes. And it's a, you know, it's a fairly large foam uh, fixed wing model. This has taken a day and a half. And I mean, okay, I'm not a fast builder. I really am not a fast builder. I'm a bit fussy sometimes, which makes things take a bit longer than they should. Here we are, I've got the S800 Reptile Shadow ready to fly. And as you can see, I've got the original Roncam Eagle they sent me in here on the front. I've got an action camera I'm going to be putting in here. It's just charging at the moment, so we'll fly it once I've got that in. Um, I have my FPV antenna out here. I built one specially for this craft because I didn't have an IPSMA antenna and I wanted something short so that if it was to land upside down, then the antenna wouldn't be damaged because the fins will protect it. So that's the, the idea behind that. Now I've got the Sunny Sky motor. It actually, the bearings sound a bit dodgy in this motor out of the box, I've got to say. It's, um, don't know if I can, hang on, it's got kind of a rattle part way around the rotation, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I haven't glued the wings on, I've used tape at the moment because um, this could be a good backpack plane if you, if it flies well, being able to take the wings off and on makes, means you can backpack it and it worked really well. Now I've covered up the servo leads with some black packing tape and I've also covered up the hole because I'm a bit concerned about the FPV transmitter being tucked away in here. They may not get enough cooling, so I've covered the hole underneath uh, because there's a hole right through to there. And the idea is that the high pressure on the bottom of the wing will have to go through these slots and eventually come out the holes in the top around the antenna, provide some through cooling. And I've balanced it on the side too. I've covered up the bottom of that hole and the air will have to go through that vent. And because I don't have a RC receiver in here, I put a little bit of weight just to balance it laterally because otherwise it'll be heavy on one wing. But even so, we're going to have more drag on this side than that side, which is an issue. Perhaps, we'll find out. And uh, yeah, it's about it really. Um, I was a bit... Uh, the horn, the linkages, as always, you have to drill a hole in the servo arm and a hole in the... or the, actually the hole in the horn I had to drill to two millimetres to take these little posts. And I had to drill this out to take the 1.2 millimetre wire as well. Why can't they make servo arms with holes the right size and horns with holes the right size? I don't know. Hmm, strange, but never mind. I guess they know what they're doing. There you go. Uh, apart from that, yeah. Not a bad bit of kit, actually. Not a bad bit of kit, but we'll have to see if it flies. It's the bottom line. Right, so I've just uh, tested the FPV system out. It doesn't work. Uh, so that's a bit of a quality control fail. Um, I'm not getting anything except noise. This, uh, this power to the video transmitter, and I'm getting some distorted signal, but certainly not a usable video signal on any channel. Damn. Okay, well, never mind. All right, so here we go. ESC sounds very dodgy. That motor's missing. The ESC is cutting in and out. I've got a lot of up trim on. I might come in and just trim it out. I'll do an overhead first. I'm running four cells at the moment. And I'll just crank in some up trim. Well, it needs a lot of up trim. CG is in the recommended place, and I've got about three degrees of reflex, but it still needs a lot of up trim. So, and I haven't got the, I think I've got the stabilization on at the moment actually. Just realized I might take that off. Okay, stabilization is off. Now it needs some right trim with the stabilisation off. It still needs a crank load of up. So I might crank in some more up trim. Maximum trim reached. Okay, I've got maximum trim and it's still nose down and when they have the power off. Okay. 
so that's motor's just cut out I'll come back on now I'm going to have to replace the ESC it's just not good enough other people have had problems with the ESC and I can see why now it's oh, it's cut again now I've got no nah. well it's come back <laughs> Saves you the walk. Saves me the walk. I'm not going to try again, so we'll do a short landing. Well, I haven't got much elevator, so on the grass, please. There you go. All right. So ESC is crap, um, and it needs a snot load of up. I might be able to move that CG back a bit because the the, the elevator was. Um, I've got all the up trim I can get on the transmitter, and it's still. It's still not enough, so we got, and we've got a lot, quite a bit of reflex on those elevons. It's more than we had when we started. So there we have it, the Sky Shadow S800, and uh, what have we found from our test flight? Well, obviously um, the trim was out. I had to use a lot of up trim to get it, and I, I used all my up trim, and I still needed a little bit more, even with the CG at the right position. But more importantly, we discovered that the ESC on this model is crap, as other people have discovered. It's supposed to be 25 amps, but it kept cutting out, and this motor came down smoking hot, which it shouldn't do. This motor's designed for four cell operation, and I wasn't using full throttle very often at all with this thing, so yeah, something's definitely wrong. I have to put a decent ESC in there. In fact, you don't really want a mini quad ESC in here. Um, there are many benefits to having a fixed wing ESC if you're flying a fixed wing. So, yep, that was pretty obvious. Now, the FPV system didn't work. I'm going to check. It was just um, a corrupted kind of noise so maybe it's on the wrong channel because the instructions for setting the channels on these is absolutely crap they show you little things but they don't show you which side of the little um, mark is the actual switch and which side is the space so you can end up putting them all around the wrong way and I have to check that uh, but definitely it was not a usable FPV signal and I don't know um, my concerns maybe this is, gets really hot I've no idea but yeah pretty crap now the stabilization system I actually had it switched on by mistake uh, to start with and it was actually pretty good it did make it very smooth to fly I was quite impressed I wasn't holding out much you know expectation but it did seem to work quite well and uh, yeah apart from that now one thing I did notice is and I wasn't too sure to start with if you're going to use the stabilization board in the package then just set your transmitter up as a normal rudder and elevator setup. You don't need any mixing in your transmitter. And that's great if you've got one of those cheap four channel sets that doesn't have a mixer. Just, you, you can fly this because it has built in mixing. When you switch, set it to Delta, it actually does the mixing for you between rudder and elevator. It's really good. So you can use the cheap old $29 Hobby King radio with this, uh, with this plane and it will fly just fine and dandy. Now, as for the flight characteristics, I was quite impressed. It does groove nicely. Um, it's not a very windy day here, but it grooves nicely. It's got a good turn of speed at full throttle. And on the approach, I slowed it right up. It didn't stall. It just mushed into the ground. It was fantastic. Really good. Handles nicely. So I'd have to say on reflection that if you are going to buy one of these, uh, if you buy the plug and fly as they say you're going to get a video transmitter of questionable quality you're going to get a camera you have to throw away you're going to get servos which I personally would not use because they're a bit light in the gearing and you're going to get an ESC which is crap and a motor which in this case has a noisy bearing so is it really worth going for the plug and fly well you may have more luck than me in which case yeah it's probably worth it although if you're really serious about having one of these and giving it a hard time I'd buy the one without all the electronic gizmos I'd just buy the basic um, airframe, put my own mini quad motor on there. You can even go to a 2206 or a 2207 if you want more power. Use a decent ESC, even a fixed wing one, uh, maybe even a 30 amp and if you're going to run four cells. And I would um, use metal geared servos. They work just fine. Uh, and uh, as a decent camera, as I say, and you'd have a pretty kick-ass little plane actually. I'm really quite impressed with it so far. I'll do some more flying and report back later, but so far, yeah, I really like it. Um, now all I've got to do is change the ESC, uh, change the video gear, and uh, fly it again. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. Meantime, it's one of our few now almost fine days, so I'm going to get back to the air. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.